commentary and insights you just don't get on the mainstream media. No fake news, just reality, so you can live your life in the know. share a is your opportunity to get behind For the People. Give securely online at ForThePeopleShow.com. It's share Help For the People now at ForThePeopleShow.com. Thanks for your support. All right, Keith Allen and For the People, and yes, it is share You can give online securely, get the raffle ticket, $25, wins you $200. Somebody's going to win it, and why not you? Kay, are you there? Hi, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Tell me what's going on. Well, I have with me uh, Steve Arado, Nam, Mike. We formed a committee. I'm uh, going to let Steve talk to you about that. And we have some other issues that we're going to be bringing up today and some exciting news for uh CC and what its mission statement is what we want to do is we're dealing with a lot of people that have friends, relatives, or family members that have been killed by police officers, and we uh, investigated by the federal government. When people are killed by the police right now. They're just being investigated locally. And uh, we're not real happy with the results of those investigations. Well, we don't want people to scratch their head and wonder what in the world started all of this. Kind of give us a little backstory for people that may not have been familiar with what's going on. Okay, well, as you know, Keith, uh, my partner here, Michael Funk, was killed by the police. Uh, we had a gunman come in the building and uh, take hostages and. Uh, my partner, who is owner of the business here, part owner, got a chance to escape, and he was shot at 19 times from 25 yards away by police officers that personally knew him. And after he was out she came out and said that he was threatening to gun anyone. Well, that's absolutely horrible. So what we did uh, with the CCC, um, because of there are so many police killings um, nationwide, it just seems like every single day you turn on the news or you pick up the newspaper and you're hearing one, two, three more cases. We've had several cases right here in Wisconsin, uh, right in our own backyard. And to just give you some examples, not only Michael Funk, our friend, Joseph B. Jimmy Sanders, Larry Jenkins, Isaiah Tucker, Tyler Whitmire, Michael Bell, and those are just a few examples of people that are right here in our backyard that were killed by the police. The, the biggest problem that they, the families have with that in talking to the families is they're just not getting any answers. We're 20 months into Michael Funk's murder, and we are still looking for answers. We really feel as a committee that it's our obligation, because we chose to do this, to help these families out there get answers that they're looking for. All they want is the truth, and that's not happening. Yeah, and 
It is a shame. And you know what I was thinking the other day with all the attention that this case is wrought with, you know, your uh, friend there at the Post Crescent and the TV stations with your hard work and the guys uh, work there at Eagle Nation. You'd figure because of all that heat that finally somebody would do the right thing. But even after all of that, still... We're still where we're at. They're not even admitting. And if anything, uh, they're just denying that this thing even happened. I think they just want it to go away. What is what is your thought? Well, Keith, that's what that's the problem. And, you know, you were here twice. You came to Nina, Wisconsin. You were here at Eagle Nation Cycles. You felt the presence of Michael Funk and you know exactly what happened here. What, in our opinion, what's what's happening is this attorney general that we have, Brad Schimmel, here in Wisconsin, rides into town, whatever town it is, wherever a murder is committed by police officers, he comes into town, he justifies the killings, gets on his white horse, and he rides back to Madison to his comfortable little office. And I'm sure that because other families don't have the camaraderie and the closeness that we have here at Eagle Nation, cycles to to work on this together and get stuff done these families are just totally lost and it's the end of conversation until the next one happens and then the next family is the next victim absolutely and for our stations and for our listeners i have to apologize i almost felt like i was on remote for a second we had some gremlins with uh, our hookup today and everything seems to go perfect but uh, we're, we're back up. Everything's good. Sorry about that. I'm sure people were saying, what's going on there? But it was a gremlin. It's, it's, it's worked out. It's a, it's a wire, one of this uh, Cat 5 wires, it seems like it's got a short. So we're just going to have to replace it at the end of the broadcast. But I think we'll be fine. Everybody's hearing us. Everybody's good. Yeah, Kay, emotionally, this definitely resonated with me on so many different levels um it's not even funny first when you contacted me was it a year and a half ago two years almost now about december 18th of 2016 yeah and hearing what happened you know and you know there's a lot of things that do happen and some stories are good and some are bad but when you have somebody that deliberately goes out of their way to kill somebody and then make sure there's how many bullets do they put in Michael Funk? Well, they shot at him 19 times. They hit him seven. And then when he was down on the ground, they put two more bullets into Who him. Who shoots somebody? Yeah, one of the officers made the remark that he was still moving. So I shot him two more times. Who shoots somebody 19 times? Well, apparently those two officers did. I, mean, I don't know if they thought they were practicing for deer hunting or what, what their thought of what did they guys thought was. Did they think this guy was Rambo? Well, I think they thought they were Rambo. Well, there's a past uh, to Eagle Nation uh, in basically a history. And the history was that uh, they thought that for whatever reason, the motorcycle shop, because they were, you know, motorcycles that they must be selling drugs out of there. Remember that when they came in to look around and uh, what did they find? Go ahead. Steve. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, they went into the basement. The only thing was cook cooking up was a gym with uh, guys working out in a gym and a bar that's used after hours privately. Is that correct? And an archery range. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And there was a skateboard. There was a skateboard uh, park down there where. Uh, Anywhere from 20 to 30 kids came every Saturday morning. Well, they came all the time skateboarding down there. But um, Saturday mornings was a normal for kids to come in here. ML was the, the chef. The people. Made, uh, made breakfast for these kids, fed them, and they all went off onto their skate world. And um, that morning, you probably would have had 20 or 30 kids come in here for breakfast as usual. Unbelievable. Well, I am so appreciative of all the hard work that you have put in, Kay, to keep Michael Funk's memory alive, but also justice for Michael Funk. And this goes beyond now, I understand, with this organization beyond Michael. I mean, it, it started you out thinking about this, but there are other people affected by similar cases throughout the country. Is that right? 
Well, that's right. But first of all, it's not just my effort. There's no I in team, Keith. And I got a good team here that we all work together on this. All right. So give us give us the names. Who's working with you? Okay. We got Mike Holmes. We got Nam. Got Steve Arado. Donna Frankhart. Ed Blake. Myself. We have four of the six of us here today. But we also have a, a big following out there in the community. Um, we did start a petition that we have online that is really, really moving fast um, that we're very pleased about. We have a, uh, an email address that we'll be giving out in the show that people can contact us. We want people nationwide to get involved with this. This is not just a Wisconsin problem, Keith. This is a nationwide problem, and we want people out there to know. Like I said, there are people out there that don't have anybody but some but themselves and some maybe just a little bit of family. And we want these people to know that we are the voice out there for these people to help get justice for them as well as justice for Michael Funk. And that's Amen. why we are a team. Well, that's a good thing. And how, how are you funded somehow? Uh, how, how do you... How, how do you how do you do what you do? No, there's no there, we have no funding from anyone. We we all do this ourselves, and we come together and meet and talk about it. And and just to let people know that this is not this is not a uh, a cop hating organization by any means. You know, because you know people can say, oh well, these guys hate cops because of all of this. No, not at all. We don't believe that at all. We just feel that that law enforcement in general. Right. Needs to, to be held accountable for what they do. You know, it's more or less they're losing their moral compass. Yeah. Is the way I, I, I can put it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way of putting it, that's for sure. Um, so, Kay or someone, update us on the case. Where are we at with uh, Michael Flatoff? I understand he wanted uh, change of venue. I guess he was change of attorneys. Where are we with the case right now? What's happening? Well, presently, because Brian Flatoff has just about fired every attorney he's had, which I don't even know the number anymore. I think nine, I was up to, ten. was it nine or ten? Yeah. yeah. Um, right now, as things stand, until they change again, the trial is set for March. Now, what's his beef? Does he feel like something uh, happened? Uh, he was mistreated? Well, he doesn't have anything to do sitting in prison, but probably to think of goofy things and to keep coming up with whatever he can do to just to, to postpone this over and over. He's got, he's got nothing to lose by what he's doing. Well, he doesn't want to be executed. He's a nut. Uh, so where do we stand with charges? Will he uh, be placed on death row one day? And Wisconsin, no, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Wisconsin doesn't have a death penalty. Well, how do we move him to a different state? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we transport them by airplane. <laughs> you, uh, you help us with that one, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Now the police department, what in the world is going on? We got the same chief of police there. Yes, Nothing's changed. Nothing's, Nothing's changed. changed. And they Matter of fact, the officer that, uh, shot Michael Funk has been promoted to detective. You're kidding me. No, not at all. Now, are, have they been good boys? Since the incident, have their behavior changed, do you think, or who, who knows? They've pretty much left us alone, which I believe is just a result. They don't want anything brought up in a courtroom of them harassing us or giving us any kind of a problem. So they don't come well, by and they do... Took, they took the medals that they received, medals of commendation for the good job that they did. Um, one of the officers that killed Michael actually took his medal with a picture of him getting dinged in the helmet by Brian Flatoff and had it framed. And I'm sure he's got that hanging in his detective office now. Wow. So they're still up there above the, above the law and above anybody so else. So they're just hoping this thing just kind of, you know, blows out of town, so to speak. And they, they realize that this thing was not good. And there was a lot of media play and still is with this national show and then with NBC, CBS, all the local channels and, really kind of a big deal. We did a couple national broadcasts up there, created a storm. Um, with all of the assembly, with all the people that showed up, do you think we did some good? Oh, I know we did. We have more backing now with the, the community 
than we ever had before. Those two shows and you coming to town made a very, very big impact on uh, on the people of the community. I was able to talk to some people on Sunday um, that actually 